Welcome to part three in the module that provides a discussion of patterns and frameworks for service access and communication. In previous parts of this module, we summarized the accidental complexities with the C-level programming interfaces available on most operating systems. We then talked about how we can apply the wrapper facade pattern to alleviate a number of these complexities. We're now going to spend a little time describing the ACE C++ socket wrapper facades, which are open source encapsulations of the underlying socket functions that run portably on many, many different operating systems. The ACE socket wrapper facades define a set of C++ classes that work together to address some of the limitations with sockets. They define building blocks for higher level abstractions. You can plug and play these different wrapper facades for sockets or various types of sockets, other kinds of inter-process communication mechanisms using parameterized types or inheritance and make it easy to build and plug and play these larger constructs out of smaller pieces. You can also simplify common use cases. If you take a look at the normal socket interface, it causes, there's a number of different functions that have to be called in order to set up a socket in passive mode or active mode. We can do those things in one fell swoop with a single call by using abstraction. This is the wrapper facades that ACE provides are also more type safe. You just can't do certain kinds of error prone operations that you might do with the low level C interfaces. And finally, we can also provide portability to many different operating systems, whereas before we'd have to wrestle with those types of issues in each of our applications one at a time. These classes, of course, are designed with the wrapper facade pattern in mind, and that'll help to explain and justify and document some of the design decisions we have here that we'll be covering. There's a number of different classes that are part of the C++ wrapper facades in ACE. Uh, one of the classes is called ACE INET Adder, and that provides an encapsulation of the internet domain addressing functions and data. We also have something called an ACE SOC stream, which is the primary unit that's used to communicate sending and receiving data across connections between peers. There's also a factory called an ACE SOC connector that's used to connect an ASOC stream with a remote server so it can begin to communicate. And then finally, we have another factory that's called the ASOC connector, and that's used to passively accept connections and initialize an ASOC stream so it can carry out a communication interaction with its connected peer. Take a look at this URL for more information about how these various classes work together. If you take a look at the socket wrappers in ACE, you'll see that they're intentionally designed to be much more clearly aligned with the various design dimensions of programming both local and remote communication. We're going to talk through some of those dimensions here. Uh, one of the dimensions is the type of communication service. Are we using datagrams? Are we using streams? Are we using something odd called a connected datagram? These kinds of things are factored away into the manner in which we design the classes. Another key theme here is connection role versus communication role. There's a pair of connection roles, active connections, passive connections. And then you have communication that takes place once things are, are connected. Once again, these things are baked into the design of the classes. Yet another role is the communication domain. Is it internet domain, which is meant to use TCP IP across address spaces, across networks, or across hosts on different networks? Or is it intended to be used for local domain, local communication, local sockets, the so-called Unix domain communication, where the processes reside on the same host machine but may run in different processes? So the nice part about the wrapper facades is that by using the wrapper facade pattern, ACE is able to encapsulate these different types, roles, and communication domains in the object-oriented design. It's easy to tell at a glance by looking at the names of the classes what role they play in the overall communication paradigm. As a simple example of this, if you take a look at the wrapper facades, you'll see that we have a set of classes that are called the SOC classes. And these are the ones that embody the internet communication domain. There's a separate set of classes called the LSOC classes. And they embody the local sockets, or Unix domain communication. And it's easy, again, to tell at a glance how these different classes work just by reading the names. ACE also provides many wrapper facades for other kinds of communication that are not as common, but are very popular and powerful. Things like broadcast, multicast, and various kinds of unicast mechanisms for datagrams as well. So let's talk a bit about the classes, and we'll talk a bit more about the class design. 
One of the key classes you use when you program with the socket wrappers is the ACE sock stream class. And this class essentially encapsulates data transfer between connected peers. It has methods in there that allow you to send and receive up to n bytes of data, as well as exactly n bytes of data, so no more confusion with short reads and short writes. It supports scatter, read, and gather write operations, which allow you to do very efficient domain crossing interactions to send groups of data or receive groups of data in one fell swoop. And it also makes it easy to perform blocking, non-blocking, and timed I.O. with a very simple, similar interface. Another capability you'll see throughout all the different wrappers in, in ACE is the concept of C++ traits, which makes it much easier to provide generic programming, providing generic algorithms and generic containers, and using the traits in, in interesting ways. Uh, in this particular case, you see this ACE sock stream has something called a peer adder, which is a trait. Just a little digression on traits. Traits are a powerful design pattern that are applied to C++, used very commonly in the C++ standard template library. And they're used to be able to allow classes to indicate explicitly what their dependencies are on other classes in a generic way. So for example, all the inner process communication wrapper facades in ACE define various traits like peer adder and peer stream. And those things are then mapped to the appropriate specific dependency on specific classes in that particular wrapper facade family. For example, here's an illustration of how we can have the same trait name for both the socket wrappers as well as the TLI wrappers, which is another kind of wrapper uh, around another kind of IPC mechanism you commonly find on many Unix platforms. And notice how all classes now have something called peer adder, but those map to different kinds of things. The use of traits makes it easy to write generic algorithms. It makes it easier to write generic containers, and therefore is a powerful mechanism that you'll find used throughout the generic programming paradigm in C++. If you take a look at this URL, you'll find out more information about traits and trait classes. So now going back onto our discussion about the, the ACE abstractions. So we have a SOC stream that's used for communication once things are connected, but we first have to connect things in, in order to be able to get the communication to flow. To do this, we have a factory called the ACE SOC connector. And this factory is used to actively establish a new endpoint of communication by allowing a client, typically, to connect to a particular address. And this connection establishment can be done either blocking or non-blocking or in a timed manner. And once the connection is actually successfully established, what you get as a result is an initialized and connected ACE SOC stream, which can then be used to send and receive the data. That's the active side of the connection role. These again use traits, just like we use for the SOC stream. The passive side is done with another class called the ACE SOC acceptor. The ACE SOC acceptor is the part that waits to listen for connections to come in from active clients. And the way this works is it waits to connect, waits for the connect to show up, and when the connect shows up, the accept function returns, and what you've got back is a connected and initialized ACE SOC stream object. And that ACE SOC stream object can then be used to send and receive data in whatever application or service-oriented protocol we're using without having to worry about how it got connected in the first place, be it active or passive. You can do these uh, accept operations both uh, in, or in blocking, non-blocking, and time manner. Again, we can also use mechanisms using traits to be able to plug and play these different uh, IPC capabilities for higher level components. So to summarize this particular discussion, Unfortunately, the socket API has a bit of a confusing asymmetry between connection roles and the socket modes. Uh, for example, here's a, a problem that can arise when you're programming sockets. There's nothing to stop you from calling the socket factory, getting back a socket, and then accidentally calling send on that socket before you connect it. The API won't prevent you from doing that. Likewise, there's nothing to stop you from getting a socket and then accepting on that socket and then trying to do a read on the listen mode socket, which is also incorrect. But there's nothing that the API can do to make those things go away. So one of the nice things about the ACE socket wrapper facades is that they make it impossible to make these kinds of mistakes. You can't do things in the wrong order. 
you can't accidentally try to do an accept call on a data mode SOC stream. You can't do a read and write call on a listen mode SOC acceptor and so on. And so these kind of things are, are minimized in, in your uh, design.